So, how does the World Wide Web work? Well, in 1990, Tim Berners-Lee, shown here, invented the web. Uh, namely, he invented three technologies. Uh, the URL, or the Uniform Resource Locator, the HTTP, or the Hypertext Protocol, and HTML, or the Hypertext Markup Language. So these three together form what we now know as the web. And uh, so let's look back and see, think about what he had at the time. So in 1990, there was an internet. It had been around like 30, 20, 30 years. And so the internet, because of the internet, any computer in the internet could talk to any other computer in the internet, right? And uh, as long as you could log in, uh, you could uh, talk to the computer, right? Each computer has an IP number. And there was, for example, the FTP protocol, the file transfer protocol. And you could use that if this guy was running an FTP um, server and you were running, you run your FTP client, you could go to this machine, say, you know, say that was uh, uh, old Google, because Google didn't exist back then, uh, dot com. And let's say once you went to that machine, you would go to some directory called docs, and in there you would find file1.txt. So that was the state of things. Now what Tim wanted to do was, uh, you know, he wanted to build a distributed document system. So the idea was that say, you know, you had a server and you had all these documents here. Um, the way it was, uh, if you wanted to make these documents available to everybody in the internet, you would basically have to tell everybody, okay, to get this document here, uh, you have to go to this machine, use the FTP program, go to this machine, then change to this directory, then the document is called a.txt. Oh, and another problem was that after you did that, you could download that document, but if this document, you know, it was a text file or a word file or whatever, uh, this document wanted to refer to another document in another machine, uh, it, again, it could do it only in English. It could say, oh, so inside this document, it might say, oh, you should get this other document over here. The way you do that is you go to this machine, call whatever, and then you go to this directory, call whatever, and then that's how you get that document. Rather cumbersome. So what Tim wanted was something simpler uh, that could be automated so people could just keep track of uh, all their documents and one document could link to another one. And um, he used hypertext, right? So hypertext, uh, basically means just text files with with links on them. So the H here stands for hypertext, which is really an old idea, I believe from 1950. Uh, the idea that a document can link to another document and you have this link that you can follow. And these are the same links we have today. Um, so but what Tim did was actually went ahead and implemented. So uh, let's first look at this, this URL. So the URL solved the problem of, you know, having to describe this whole thing in English, right? So if we wanted to describe this whole thing, uh, we could do so as such. We say FTP colon slash slash, oh, what was it? Oldgoogle.com slash doc slash f1.txt. So I don't have to describe it in English anymore. I can just say, give you this URL. And you know that this means use the FTP protocol to go to this machine and then go to this directory and then get this file. I could also specify a port number as such. Uh, say port 77, I put a colon and then I put a port number and that's how that works. So that's the URL, right? All the URL gives us, and it's a really huge thing if you think about it, it gives us a unique pointer to every file in the internet. That's that's an awesome idea. Um, now Tim didn't stop there, right? So uh, 
I took that idea and then he created his own new protocol. Instead of FTP, he created HTTP, um, which is very similar, right? So, and uh, we can use HTTP, right? Um, let's connect to google.com. So just like FTP runs, FTP is a program that runs on a computer waiting for calls, so that's HTTP. An HTTP server, or a web server, uh, is just a program that runs on the computer waiting for other people to connect to it, and we're going to do that right now. And it runs, by the way, on port 80. That's where HTTP is supposed to run. It can run on any port, but by default it's 80. So now we're connected to Google, and it's waiting for me to type in uh, a HTTP command. That way, if I don't, uh, it's going to tell me, you know, error. I can don't understand what you just typed in. I'm going to close the connection. So, however, if I type an actual HTTP command like get.index.html, um, this is the command. It says get me this file. Very simple. Right? So that's it. I type that in. I hit enter, and boom! I get uh, Google actually gives me the page. Uh, scroll up here, it's a long page. Okay. Um, so I went in, I typed in get, and then this is what I got back. Uh, the first part of the response is HTTP 1.0, this is the version of the protocol, and then it says 200, which means okay. So it tells me I did it, and here's my response. Then these things here, there's a date, expires, cache control, we call these the headers. So we get a bunch of headers, then a blank line, and then we get the actual HTML document. This is the hypertext markup document, uh, which we get after that. So that's basically it. Uh, the get is one of the HTTP commands. There's also post. So you use post when you're uploading data to the server. And these are basically it when you're using a browser. Um, you can either get a page or post or upload some uploads on data to the server um, and both of these will cause a page refresh in the browser and if you're doing XHR or XML HTTP requests that's when you're doing some Ajax stuff you can also use the put and delete delete commands so post creates new data on the server put is meant to update data that is already in the server and delete delete data in the server. Uh, there's also another one we the browser uses, but we as web developers don't use much. Is the the head it only returns the headers, it doesn't return the documents. It's just when you want to check the headers, uh, and that's it. So all of you know all of the HTTP is just these these five commands. That that's the whole of the protocol. Uh, and then um, so let me go back up here and show you. A little bit better. I'm going to go to the Google page here. So I'm running Chrome, and if you run Chrome, you can run Chrome Tools, which I just started. I'm going to reload the Google home page, and you can see what happened. If I'm on the Network tab, and uh, this is just telling me what the browser did. So the first thing it did is, as I just said, it did a get on Google.com. Click on that, we can see more details. I did a get on google.com. I got 200, okay, and I got these headers. And then I got this response, right? So all you're looking, all you're seeing here is exactly the same thing I just showed you here. It's just prettier, right? So it just parses everything, color codes it, puts a little green thing, very nice and pretty. Um, so what happens then though, your browser takes this HTML, right? So HTML, you remember, was third part, uh, it's the hypertext markup language. So this is uh, it's a markup language, which is, means it's not a programming language. It doesn't run. These are not programs. It just tells me, you know, this part is in boldface, and this is the paragraph, and this is the header. Um, and of course, it looks uh, like this, right? Uh, well, 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 let me click over here. So it looks like this. Again, this is uh, Chrome tools making it look pretty. Uh, so you have the various tags here, etc. Um, so what happens is uh, uh, the browser gets that response uh, and then parses it. And within this HTML, somewhere in here, 
there is some HTML like that is telling it, okay, you have to go get this photo uh, also from the server. So it goes and does the request this URL, whoop, the whole URL, does it get on that URL, and then it gets the, the photo. You see the, the response was 304, not modified, because basically, you know, I had gotten this photo before and it hasn't changed since the last time I got it, so I don't need to download it again. And this is a little preview. Uh, what the photo looks like, and you see this is up here in the top right. Right. You can also see the Google logo right here, and if you scroll down here, somewhere there it is. Um, is that it? Uh, no, these are all the little icons in the page. Uh, so Google downloads these are all the little icons that can appear in a page. Uh, here's the logo. Oops, click twice. Well, there's a log, right? So it fetches my photo, then it fetches this blank HTML page. I have no idea why it's doing that. Google does that. Um, and then it fetches this, the Google logo, and then uh, these .js, um, that's part of Chrome. Um, but uh, let's see, do we have any? JavaScript files, I believe. These are all uh, so it's hard to see, but so this is a JavaScript file .js here. Um, so these are actually programs written in JavaScript. So these would run on my browser. So as a web developer, you have to be aware of this process, right? You write an HTML page, the browser gets that HTML page. And that's the first thing that happens. Uh, and then the browser parses the HTML page and then starts to download your JavaScript files. Or even sometimes as it is parsing it, it will start to download the other JavaScript files and pictures, etc., that are mentioned in that original HTML page. And then sometimes even those make you download some other stuff and so on. So eventually you're all done downloading stuff. So again, that's it. Web developer, you look at this timeline and you try to squish everything to the left, right? So that everything gets downloaded as fast as possible and the user sees the page as quickly as possible. Um, but uh, the point is that, um, main point is to remember is that so within this page, you know, the reason we download this photo here, um, let's go back here to this web page. If I click here, Click here, then it shows me where in this page it references the Google logo. So it says, you know, Im image tag, and then source is, and this is the URL. So the browser uses this to build the full URL, which is http colon slash www.google.com slash images slash SRPR, and then downloads that. So that's how these three things work together, right? Uh, the HTTP protocol is what we use to download the HTML page. The HTML page contains URLs, which then point to other documents in the web, uh, which can we can download using the HTTP protocol, which we use to download HTML pages, we contain URLs, and so forth. So that's how these three things put together uh, create the World Wide Web.